What's up everybody, how's it going? This video is gonna be one of my most fun and interesting ones yet. We're gonna be looking at three real software engineering bugs. These are three bugs that we encountered on Algo Expert, my company, my website, algoexpert.io, and I think that whether or not you're a software engineer, in other words, maybe you're someone who's never written a line of code in your life, I think that you'll be able to appreciate this video because it's gonna give you a glimpse of what happens behind the scenes of a real product. What kinds of bugs can introduce themselves in real products, how they manifest themselves, and how we as software engineers can kind of debug these bugs. I picked these three particular bugs specifically to show you various flavors of bugs. As you'll soon see, these three bugs are quite different from one another. The first bug is the type of bug that's just caused by errors in your code, and you have to kind of find the errors. The second bug is much more of a hairbender. It's the kind of bug that involves both the front end and the back end, and it's just much more difficult to find its root cause. And then the third and final bug is probably the nastiest type of bug. It's the kind of bug that is completely mind-numbing, where you have no idea what's going on, you cannot find the answer. And finally, you realize that the fix is just a one-line fix that still doesn't really make sense and is still kind of incomprehensible. So be sure to stick around for that last bug. With that, let's dive into it. So for the first bug, I'm actually gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna group a bunch of bugs into one. Basically, when we started developing Algo Expert, we had a lot of bugs affecting the questions list page on Algo Expert that you can see right here. By the way, if you're thinking right now, hmm, is this entire video some sort of ingenious hidden ad for Algo Expert? You'd be right. Now, if you're not in the business of preparing for coding interviews, you are not the target audience of this ad, and you can continue to enjoy the content of the video, but if you are in the business of preparing for coding interviews, then, by all means, check out algoexpert.io, use the promo code CLEM, C -L -E -M, for a discount on the platform, and then, continue to enjoy the content of this video. Now, where was I? If you go back on the questions list page, you'll notice that one of the key sort of functionalities that we have on this page is we give users the ability to reorder their questions and to save their new questions order. So for instance, I can move this linked list construction question here. I can move this BST construction question right here. I can move this question here, right? You have this sort of like nice little thing to kind of reorder questions. And if you refresh the page, Page. You can see linked list construction here is at the top of the easy category. We'll refresh and it's still at the top. Now here are some of the bugs that we had on this page. One of the recurring bugs that we had was that we were incorrectly storing data about the order of questions. And so basically we weren't saving the order of questions. So for instance, if I move this question, iterative in order traversal, I move it to the top, it says saving, and then we refresh and yet it's still at the bottom, so it didn't save. Another bug that we had, kind of a funky one related to CSS, was when you would drag a question, sometimes it would go underneath other questions. Sometimes it would go above, but sometimes it would go underneath, right? Super funky, you can see it's, it's sort of hovering underneath other questions. Now this was just that we were incorrectly setting the Z index attribute in CSS, which kind of says how high in space an element is, and we were incorrectly doing that, but kind of a weird, gnarly bug, so to speak. Yet another bug that we had on this page was with this group randomly feature that we recently came out with. As you can see here, we're grouping the questions not by category, not by difficulty, just in a seemingly random order, but as you might imagine, behind the scenes, we are keeping track of these sort of four different columns here, and we are making sure that they're all positioned in the same position every time. Now, we were incorrectly sort of sorting these four columns and keeping them in their correct order, so when we would reorder questions, like look, if I reorder them, see how the columns swap? And this would happen sometimes because, again, we were incorrectly sorting these sort of four columns. And so as you saw, all of the bugs that affected this page were really bugs caused by our code. We just had to kind of sit down, dive into the code, and fix them. So the second bug that I want to show you is this one. And this one dates back to a couple of years ago now. It was at the very beginning of Algo Expert when we were first developing the platform. And I don't believe that this bug found its way to production. I do think that we caught it as we were developing Algo Expert. But so basically, when you go on the purchase page of Algo Expert, if you scroll down and you want to try to actually buy the product, 
you can just fill out your information. So I'll put foo bar here. I'll put a random test credit card. This is on my local dev server. This will not work on production. Uh, but so if you purchase Algo Expert, you wait for the sort of request to complete, and then you are met with this little success message that tells you, you know, woohoo, your purchase worked, and you can start working. Now, when you click this start working link, you would expect to have access to the product, right? And yet, lo and behold, you're on the questions list page and all of the questions that were in an inaccessible before you purchased are still inaccessible. And this is really bad, right? You, you literally can't click on the questions. You just don't have access at the top. You can clearly see it says you don't own Algo Expert. So this is a really bad bug. Now, it's not quite as bad as you think because if you refresh the page, Ta-da, you do have access. Now you own Algo Expert and all the questions are available. But so what is going on here? Why is it, and this was what we were asking ourselves when we were developing this and kind of encountering this bug, why is it that we purchase the product, clearly we get, you know, a success response from our back end that tells us, yeah, you purchased the product, everything worked. You go on the questions list page, you don't have access, but when you refresh, you do have access. So we started asking ourselves, you know, what happens when you first load Algo Expert, which is what we were doing when we refreshed the page, that we don't do right after purchasing. And we were kind of trying to find the discrepancies and you know the, the things that could cause this issue. And basically what it turned out to be, and this is why earlier when I introduced these bugs, I said that this one was kind of a hairbender because it, it was both the front end and the back end, is when you purchase Algo Expert, we make a request to our back end. To, we hit the Algo Expert API. Our API then makes a request to Stripe our payment provider. Now Stripe does a lot of sort of magic behind the scenes. It contacts your bank and it does stuff with your credit card to make sure it's not fraudulent and all that good stuff. And what it does takes too long of a time for it to keep connection with the client, if that makes sense. So basically, once the request sort of completes and we're told by Stripe that things are good, right? This card is not fraudulent or whatever, and we've completed the, the charge. But before they've sort of validated, I guess, everything with the bank, by the way, I'm kind of explaining this here, probably leaving out a couple of details. But so basically when Stripe finally knows that, hey, this user, everything worked, and they now have access to the product, we have updated their sort of account status to have access to the product, it is no longer speaking to the front end or to the client. And Stripe can't just magically reach the front end or the client, the browser, right? The browser has to sort of re-ask Stripe, hey, does this user have access to Algo Expert? And so here, that was sort of the issue. We needed to make another call on the front end to Stripe that sort of said like, hey Stripe, Tell us the status of the user. This happens to be a call that we make on the front end when you load the page, but we didn't make it right after you purchased Algo Expert. And I can even show you the exact place in the code where we implemented the fix for this bug. It's right here in the middle of all of our code to purchase Algo Expert. You'll notice that basically we have this thing here, subscribe to plan. This is sort of the method that calls the back end and does all the purchasing. And then finally here, when everything has succeeded, we have to call this method here called force stripe hook. And if we look at what this method is, it well, here I added a line, uh, return promise dot resolve, which basically made this method not do anything. And I did that so that I could demonstrate the bug to you all before. And so basically this calls this get stripe sub status method, which does exactly what I was saying earlier. It sort of reissues a call to Stripe and says, hey Stripe, tell us about this person's subscription status. Do they have access to the product? And you can see here, we have this comment that kind of explains why are we doing this seemingly weird call to uh, Stripe after we've purchased the product. So that was the second bug. Now let's look at that third and final bug, which like I said, was mind numbing. So this third bug was actually live in production for about a month. And it happened pretty recently, about 
two months before I'm posting this video in the summer of 2019, and it affected the coding workspace on AlgoExpert, what you're seeing right here. Now, if you're familiar with the website, you know that this is one of the sort of bread and butter features of the website. It's a key part of the website. And we started getting customer complaints saying that the entire coding workspace was kind of laggy. There were sort of performance issues, it was a bit choppy, just wasn't a great experience. Now this was super concerning for us because first of all, you never want to hear about performance issues when you're dealing with front ends. That's just a very bad thing to hear about. And second of all, we had never had any issues with performance during the first, I don't know, year and a half of Algo Expert's lifespan. And so when we heard about this, you know, we started looking into it and we realized, wow, we can actually replicate this. And so I'm going to show you what it was. Uh, you might not be able to see the actual lag on the entire workspace in the recording because the entire workspace was sort of laggy. But if you look at one of the sort of code editors, let's look at the test one right here. I'm going to zoom into it. You can see that if I scroll down, you see how it sort of jumps? Like I'm scrolling down and you see how the sort of test cases just like randomly jump? That's such a bad experience. It's super janky. It's sort of out of nowhere. It makes it hard to kind of scroll through the inputs. That was happening in all of our input editors. The entire workspace was just sort of laggy. Not that laggy, but laggy enough to where it was noticeable. And so we started getting really concerned. What was causing this? So as we started debugging this issue, the first thing that came to our minds was that maybe we had too many of these text editor boxes on the page. As you can see, we have one for the prompt, we have one for the hints, we have one for the output, for the solutions, for the tests, and behind the scenes, we're using a library called Code Mirror. It's an open source library, something very popular. Uh, it's probably the best library for code editors and for text editors. It gives you, for instance, you know, these uh, colored keywords for languages like JavaScript and Python and so on and so forth for free. But so we were wondering, maybe we have too many of those on the page and that's somehow causing a performance issue. Now, we were really hoping that that wasn't the issue because that would have been really bad. That would have meant that we would probably have to re- think our page, right? Maybe we wouldn't be able to have all these code mirror editors on the page. But so what we did is we started removing one by one these editors. Now, it's unfortunately not as easy as just deleting a block of code because there's so much going on into this page where we feed so many, you know, parts of data and everything to different front end components. And if you try to just delete a block of code, you get a bunch of errors. But we eventually did it. You know, we removed editor by editor one by one and the performance issues were still there. They were not being fixed. And we also, of course, confirmed that the performance issues were nowhere to be seen elsewhere on the website. If we removed the entire editor workspace, like all five of these boxes, then there were no performance issues. So we knew that it had something to do with the boxes, but it wasn't how many boxes there were. So it was really confusing. And then finally, finally, we found out what the issue was, and to this day, we still don't understand why this actually fixed this bug, but we just found one super vague, super sketchy Stack Overflow answer on this, and wait for it. Wait until you see what was causing this, like, terrible performance bug. It's a one-line CSS fix, okay? Ready? Literally, this one line here, line nine, where we added a border radius to all of the elements with the code mirror class on the page. So these are the five code mirror editor boxes. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with border radius, this seems absolutely benign. Border radius just literally curves the edges of your border. So for instance, here, if you put like four pixels, it basically just says, oh, you'll have like one corner of your box that's gonna have a slightly rounded edge. For whatever reason, this is where you literally wanna like pull your hair out. This border radius is what was causing the issue. And I can show you, like if I comment out this line and we save, and I go back to the workspace, now if I scroll, it just works. There's no jumpiness no jankiness, no nothing. The entire workspace is now performing as it should. There's no lag. 
and that one line somehow fixed the entire bug. So those are three of the many bugs that we've encountered on Algo Expert. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing them in their full glory. If you did, let me know in the comments below and let me know, by the way, if you liked this kind of video and if you'd like to see more bugs or more stuff like this, I'd love to know. Don't forget to destroy the like button, to subscribe if you haven't already, to turn on that notification bell so that you know when I post, and I will see you in the next video.